Dr. Jerry, uh, just now you mentioned about nutrition being an import uh, being an important part in promoting mental wellness. So, how how does nutrition actually affect the brain? Yeah, um, there there are a number of ways. One of the things that's been discovered in quite recent years is that there is a connection, a direct pathway between the gut and the brain. We, you know, in the past, we always used to think about the blood-brain barrier, that the brain was protected um, from pathogens and so on from elsewhere in the body by the blood-brain barrier. Anything carried through in the blood would be blocked at, by, by the blood-brain barrier. We've since learned in recent years there's what's being called the gut-brain axis, which is a pathway from the gut to the brain, and the vagus nerve seems to be one of the main uh, components of this axis. Um, so what we're learning is that <clears throat> if the uh, bacteria in the gut, what we refer to as the microbiome, it's a whole system of microbes, um, so we call it a biome rather than just a microbes. It's, a, it's an ecosystem. Mm. If that's balanced, if it's healthy in the gut, then that actually uh, communicates with the brain um, <clears throat> that it is healthy and it sends correct nutrients to the brain. The brain, we should note, uses 20% of the body's energy. When you consider in terms of mass what a little lump of tissue the brain is compared with the many kgs of, of the rest of the body, 20% of the body's energy goes to the brain. That's our command center. So it's important that that command center has proper fuel. Um, and that fuel comes from our food. Uh, and so a healthy gut, healthy microbes, uh, a healthy gut microbiome is really important in that. And <clears throat> one of the problems underlying all disease particularly chronic disease, is what we know as inflammation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> inflammation occurs in the gut when food is not properly digested. Um, and when food is not properly digested, particles of it are left in the gut undigested. Now that can come about through food being improperly prepared, uh, unhealthy food, not chewing food properly, um, doing things that inactivate the natural cycle of uh, gut metabolism, including <clears throat> drinking iced water with a meal, because um, temperature goes up during digestion. Temperature in the gut goes up during digestion. And one of the things that happens then is that enzymes are released with increased temperature in the gut that are specifically designed to break down food. If we have a glass of ice water or a cold drink with a meal, then that stops that temperature of the gut going up. The correct enzymes aren't fully released. Food is not properly digested. Parts of it stay and they rot or they, they oxidize, as we would say, mm. and become a source of oxidative stress or free radical generation. Um, associated with that is inflammation. That gets carried through the blood supply and it can get carried to the brain. And it's now been identified that chronic inflammation is one of the main underlying causes of mental illness. So our diet and our gut microbiome have got important roles in affecting the body's inflammatory processes. And these in turn impact the brain's health in numerous ways. So what we can do about that um, is to do a number of things recommended by a nutritional and uh, neuroscience researchers, which is to restrict calories that we take, to have anti-inflammatory food, and um, you're talking to me from Asia, uh, turmeric is widely used in South Asian and Southeast Asian foods. Yep. Uh, it's a very powerful anti-inflammatory agent. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, antioxidants, many of the herbs and spices used in East Asian and Southeast Asian and South Asian uh, foods have antioxidant properties. So traditional spices are very important. Um, frying food is a, one of the ways that causes oxidative stress. Mm. Uh, red meat is a source of oxidation. 
Um, so cutting down on the amount of red meat eaten is important. Um, some of the supplements that have been found uh, to reduce inflammation are omega-3 fatty acids, which we can get from uh, fish oil or from krill oil or from seaweed. Um, people who are vegetarian or vegan don't want to eat fish oil or krill oil supplements, and they say, where can we get omega-3 from? Well, same place the fish get it from, which is seaweed. Um, other things are prebiotics, like yo uh, probiotics, sorry, like yoga, yogurt, not yoga, yoga is also very good, but um, we're talking about foods here. Um, yogurt, um, kefir, um, kombucha, mm -hmm. um, kimchi from Korea, um, fermented soy paste. Uh, these are all fermented foods that um, help support and promote the brain's health and to drive new, the growth of new connections and new pathways in the brain that we call neuroplasticity. Um, also, prebiotics are important. Prebiotics um, aren't really biotic in, in a direct sense according to their nature, but they stimulate a process of microbiome activity. So prebiotics are like fiber in your food. So if you have <clears throat> wholemeal bread with fiber in it, that activates the gut and stimulates um, healthy um, microbe uh, activity. Whereas refined white bread, refined white rice and so on, refined sugars do the opposite. Uh, so prebiotics as well as probiotics are important. So I see even though we are in this uh, quarantine period, I think it's still very possible for us to, to manage, to, to have a well-balanced diet and a diet that, is, that has a, a high proportion in all those uh, anti-inflammatory goodness that really helps to promote a, a, a good mental well-being. Even though, yeah, um, outside, although everyone is quarantined and then people are uh, staying, uh, practicing social distancing, it might take a toll on our mental health, but there are still many different ways, for example, diet to actually help to promote uh, good mental, mental health. That's correct, Vignes. And uh, for this, uh, fresh foods, fresh vegetables, fresh fruit, uh, which we can still um, mainly get rather than prepared meals that are microwaved. Um, and a new survey just out today uh, in the UK has found that um, people don't want life to go back to the way it was. They feel that they're eating more healthily because they're cooking real food mm -hmm. at home and not just doing quick package meals in the microwave. The air is fresher. They're getting out in nature for walks more. Um, so it's really actually a situation that's creating um, spillover to areas related to improved quality of life. And really at the heart of that, healthy nutrition, fresh food, um, non-inflammatory food uh, that's good for the body and that in fact creates a positive state of optimal state of functioning in the brain uh, is very important for us. Yeah, I agree. This this whole COVID nineteen situation actually gave us more time to to evaluate our lifestyle and to really look at our food choices and really help us to improve it. That's correct. There is of course tragedy. There's a lot of loss of life, yeah. but that in a sense also uh, intensifies the importance 